NVIDIA believes that the next big thing for AI is humanoid robotics. And during GTC, they announced NVIDIA Group. So on today's episode, I want to do an extreme deep dive about everything from this platform, hardware, software solutions, and just pretty much everything NVIDIA investors should know. So let's take a closer look in today's episode. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video and check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now let's continue with today's episode. So let's start off with just the basic thing. What is GRU? So GRU is a general purpose foundation model for humanoid robots. And I'm going to explain a little bit uh, in a bit what foundational models are and how they, why they are important to the overall market. But pretty much robots powered by GRU, which stands for Generalist Robot 00 Technology, will be designed to understand natural language and emulate movements by observing human actions. And obviously this is all going to be power through one way or another thanks to artificial intelligence and right now artificial intelligence is seeing kind of a huge leap um, forward in forms of technology because we have kind of the right amount of everything we have the right amount of hardware we have the right amount of data and we have the right amount of models to be able to put everything together so I think it's better to kind of rewind a little bit and try to understand what is a foundational model. So a foundational model in AI pretty much ref it refers to some form of large scale machine learning model that has been trained on vast amounts of data. Right now in the overall world, we're hearing a lot about foundational models in forms of large language models, right? ChatGPT4, for example, is a form of foundational model. Uh, and these models, depending on the data that they are trained on can understand, predict, and generate things like text, images, audio, or other types of data. The models are usually called foundational because they serve as a base upon which various specific applications can be built without the need to drain a model from scratch. So here I have a pretty cool example of how to use foundational models, right? So like we saw in the previous slide, the main thing about a foundation is it eliminates the need to start from scratch. You already have a nice basic understanding. So now when you have this base level, you're able to now just focus on your custom model. So a business for example, can implement proprietary data and create their own custom model. A perfect example here, thinking about robotics, and I don't know if any company is doing this, but let's say there's a company that's monitoring or recording everything firefighters do when there's a fire and how they train. They're probably maybe using things like videos and some other types of data to understand how a fighter fighter proceeds to a typical type of fire. So that company has that data of how firefighters move to some extent. Now, if you include this kind of foundational model, now you have pretty much a custom model of creating maybe some form of firefighter humanoid robots, right? So that's the important thing about foundational models. That overall firefighter company, to some extent, doesn't need to worry about the basic knowledge of humanoid robots. The only thing they need to have is kind of have that proprietary data to create this custom customizable model. So that's the great thing about foundational models. So now that we understand what Groot is and what a foundational model is, NVIDIA announced a lot of new hardware. Before we go any further, I just want to say thank you all for the amazing support we are getting in this channel. We're closing in to 40,000 subs. That is insane. So if you haven't and you are enjoying the content, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Finally, if you want to support this channel a little bit more, check out my special offer at fool.com slash Jose. Now back to today's episode. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about NVIDIA's new hardware. They announced a new computer called Jetson Thor, which is a system on chip that's that's meant for humanoid robots. And for those that are not familiar, NVIDIA has kind of a robotics market and they also have an automotive market. Their robotics market is usually called Jetson, right? The Jetson platform. And they're currently working on their current generation, which is Jetson Orin. NVIDIA also has a drive system or a drive platform that's meant for autonomous vehicles. And that one is usually just known as Orin or whatever the new name is. So just kind of just to understand this kind of platform solutions, the current drive solution for NVIDIA is called Orin. Their robotics is called Jetson Orin. Now, the new drive solution for NVIDIA's autonomous vehicle solution is called Thor. So the robotics segment is going to be called 
Jetson Thor. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to install there. I, I just wanted to add that here so we can understand that maybe the next generation is going to be called Jetson Loki or whatever they're going to go with the overall name, right? We can see with Orin Thor, maybe Loki is the next in line. Um, but this is how NVIDIA does their system on chips for the robotics market. Now, the thing with these robotic hardware solution, it usually includes the current GPU architecture plus some form of ARM-based CPU plus some form of memory. So for example, the Jetson Orin module used Ampere GPUs, which is the A100. NVIDIA didn't really release one for the Hopper architecture. There's no H, uh, Hopper GPU Orin system. Um, they had one, but they ended up canceling it for uh, for unknown reasons. I'm guessing they knew that Blackwell was going to come out and Thor was going to be a lot better. So there was no point in them releasing it. But we can see that Jetson Orin is the Ampere GPU with some form of ARM CPU and some form of memory solution. Now NVIDIA Jetson Thor is going to most likely be the Blackwell GPU architecture plus some form of ARM CPU plus some form of memory solution. So here we can see from NVIDIA that the system on chip includes, just like I mentioned, the next generation GPU based on NVIDIA's Blackwell architecture with the transformer engine delivering 800 teraflops of 8-bit floating points, which is great for AI performance and to, raw, to run things like multi-model generative AI models like Groot that we talked about earlier on. Now, outside of this, NVIDIA also talked about some software solutions that they already had and some software solutions that they're increasing thanks to the overall humanoid robotics market. So the solution that they already had is called NVIDIA's ISIC Sim. So ISIC Sim is pretty much a robotic simulation platform that gives you faster, better way to design, test, train AI-based robots, and it's powered by Omniverse. So again, one of the best ways to train any form of AI is to have a lot and a lot of data. And sometimes it might be impossible to get uh, to get real real data or, or data in the real world. So what NVIDIA created is they created this simulation um, world Omniverse, um, which they have this NVIDIA ISIC SIM, that they're able to run highly physically physically accurate virtual environments for building high fidelity simulations. And that's very important, right? Because you need to make sure that these simulations are running the laws of physics to every point, uh, to, to every pixel, right? To everything in that data, right? Because at the end of the day, the real world runs on the laws of physics. So uh, NVIDIA just kind of explained a little bit more about their i6 sim platform, but they did announce two new software solutions. The first one is ISIC Lab. And ISIC ISIC Lab is just an extension to NVIDIA's ISIC simulation, and this is pretty much just optimized for robot learning and is pivotal for robot foundation model training. Uh, so we can see this is definitely focused on kind of that AI training of form of robotics. Then we have Osmo, which is more of a workflow orchestration platform that helps during the development process and all this crazy kind of heterogeneous computing workflows. And what do I mean by that? Well. NVIDIA has this pretty cool kind of video that showcases everything that Osmo does in forms of as a developer sending their workflow and how Osmo controls that data. But I think this is a better way to understand Osmo. So Osmo, for example, before you get to your Osmo service, you have your ISIC lab, your simulation, your synthetic simulation data. You have text data that you might want to share with your robot. You might have video data you want to share to your robot. You have real robot data that you've collected with your own hardware solution. So you're going to send that all to Osmo. And then Osmo is going to send that to some form of NVIDIA compute solution. So that compute solution can be NVIDIA's DGX, which is good for training and inferencing. You can send it over to NVIDIA's OVX, which is going to be great for simulation. Or you can send it to NVIDIA's IGX or AGX, which is great for hardware in the loop validation. So there's so many places that you can send it that it starts to get tricky for developers and the, just the overall development of this robotic learning. So Osmo helps with that. So once it decides to send it to the right place, it kind of adds it to the group model. And then you have a humanoid robot that has all this data that you needed um, to kind of create your customizable humanoid robot. So Osmo, it seems to be more like the orchestra leader of what to do with the data and how how to do it where 
one of the big things with AI right now is it gets a little bit too tricky. So NVIDIA tries to, I wouldn't say dumb it down, but make those leaps or those hurdles a lot smaller so anybody can really enter into this market one way or another. And that's pretty much what Osmo Service is doing. So in that kind of example there, we talked a little bit about all the different hardware solutions that NVIDIA has. Their DGX, their OVX, their IGX, and their AGX. And I just want to explain them a little bit more. So the DGX, this is usually that heavy infrastructure that is meant for AI training and AI inferencing. Here's where we see like the DGX B200, the DGX H100 that uses NVIDIA's top of the line GPU solutions. Usually you kind of go through the cloud, you can also get the DGX cloud solution as well. So this is the big money maker. Then you have what they call the NVIDIA OVX system. So the NVIDIA OVX system is kind of like, a not a weaker version, but maybe for certain things in the robotics training, you don't need the Blackwell 200. You don't need the Hopper 100. You're pretty much here, we can see with this OVX, you're using NVIDIA's L40 as solutions. So the OVX system allows enterprises to create physical accurate models with high fidelity race trace and path trace rendering of materials, operate large scale AI enabled simulations and generate photorealistic 3D synthetic data for training. So this is pretty much what you're going to be using for that simulation side. So OVX, like I mentioned, doesn't need that H100. You're fine using the L40S. And we can see how NVIDIA hits different segments and different types of price points with their AI infrastructure. Then we have the NVIDIA IGX Orin. This is more bringing it right to the edge. And here's where you're going to end up using kind of like NVIDIA's workstation GPU. Um, like the A6000, the A5000, and so on. Then you have the NVIDIA HEX platform, which is pretty much kind of some of those chips that we talked about earlier on, like NVIDIA Jetson Thor, NVIDIA Jetson Orin, and the list goes on and on. So uh, that's pretty much everything. NVIDIA talked about the humanoid robots, and I hope you learned a lot. I personally learned a lot creating this episode. Uh, so if you haven't, make sure to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button. NVIDIA also talked about other markets outside of humanoid robots. During GTC, they announced ISIC Manipulator, which is supposed to help out with AI for the robotics arm market, which I believe is pretty pretty big right now and then isaac perceptor which is good for autonomous mobile robots and this are could be like robots that are meant to deliver um like food or kind of do that last mile delivery that we're seeing happening in certain cities like austin like um uh, like some of those big tech cities in the world uh, so that's mainly meant for autonomous mobile robots now all of this is also a great introduction or a great sales pitch to NVIDIA's software enterprise enterprise solutions. So they're NVIDIA's AI enterprise software solutions. But that is probably another episode that I'm going to cover. Uh, so today I really just want to talk about the robotics market, but just know that the robotics market is going to help drive more revenue here for NVIDIA's software solutions as well. And like I mentioned, that's going to be on another episode. Now, some of you might be wondering, hey, Jose, look, the robotics market is pretty cool, but where are we going to see this in forms of revenue? And in the revenue segment, we're going to see it all over the place. So the data center market is going to go up because you're going to see that they're going to see an increase in black B200 sales, H100, because you're going to need to do the training within those DGX systems and those OVX systems as well, which use the L40S, which are more of a data center solution. Then the you're going to have kind of the workstation GPUs, which is the IGX Orin, um, which I do believe goes in, let's go back here, the professional visualization market. And then in the auto market, you're also going to see a growth thanks to the NVIDIA Jetson Thor, which was one of the main chips we talked about in the beginning. So you're going to see revenue growth here in all these segments. And obviously the software market hits a little bit of all this. So it's not just one market, it's going to see a growth in all markets as well. 
Now, before I end this episode, I do have an NVIDIA playlist right here where I talk about all the different types of NVIDIA market solutions and do a deep dive like this. Um, my most recent one was on the healthcare market. So if you want to learn about the healthcare market, take care, uh, take a look, closer look at that. I also talked about Sovereign AI uh, on, on December of 2023. If you want to learn more about that, we just did humanoid robotics. I think next I'm going to hit the software market, but I'm creating this great nvidia playlist for every type of segment and solution that nvidia hits maybe one day i'll hit the cybersecurity market just let me know in the comments below what should be some of the markets you guys want to learn about so take care have a good day and see you next time